Are you ready for the start of Speed Weeks 97? The IMSA Endurance Championship Daytona USA Two Hour is next on the Deuce. Shiny, breezy day at the World Center of Racing, Daytona International Speedway in Daytona Beach, Florida. Welcome to the first race of Speed Weeks 97, IMSA's Endurance Championship, the season opening Daytona USA Two Hour. Hi, everybody. I'm Bob Varsha along with Marty Reed. Bill Weber and Jan Bikas are in the pit lane, and there is the field, more than 75 strong, arrayed along the pit lane in preparation of the roll off and the start for this two hour battle. Marty, let's take a look at the series breakdown. Total of 10 races this year, and this is going to be the shortest event, uh, two hours, and the longest will be a five-hour endurance race. There are mandatory driver changes. In fact, to score points, you're going to have to be in the car about 25 to 27 minutes, and there are four total classes that we'll be covering today. The car descriptions, well, they're street stocks. They're modified for safety, and the shaved Toyo Street radials taken down to a, a race depth of about, oh, a quarter of an inch. Exxon 93 octane fuel in every single car, and it's right out of the pump. Same thing you can buy at your gas station. IMSA's oldest championship. If you want to see your street ride tuned to perfection, this is the race to watch. Let's get down to the pit lane now and Bill Weber. Bob, this is one of the most exciting series you can watch, not only because of the participants and the number of cars, but because of all the surprises you'll see on the track. In fact, there were a lot of surprises in qualifying. People thought Mustangs would be the fastest, but in fact, the 46 Mustang is the fourth fastest car, and it's the fastest Mustang, nearly two seconds behind the pole sitter. It's co-driven by Andy Pilgrim, who won the 95 Grand Sports Series Championship, and actor Jason Priestley from Beverly Hills 90210, who made his racing debut in this series one year ago. Pilgrim, the veteran, says Priestley, the young driver, is getting better with every lap. The question is, will that combination be good enough to catch some of the faster cars here today? For the big surprise, let's go to Jan Beekes. Well, that's right, Bill. When you talk about surprises, think about the car that sits on the pole today is making its debut in this series. It's a Toyota Supra. Well, a Toyota Supra has been here before. In fact, Eric Van Cleef won the championship in a Toyota Supra, but that was in the sport division. Now he moves up to Grand Sport because that car, the number 88 Toyota Supra, is a twin turbocharged Toyota Supra, 350 horsepower. It flies down the straightaways here at Daytona, and it's making its debut, we are told, with the fastest average lap that any car has ever done in the IMSA Endurance Championship. So it should be great, and we have a new surprise up front, guys. No question about it, Jan. As you take a look at our pole sitting car, here's a look at our starting grid. And you're going to see some familiar names as we move down the list. Look at that number five spot. Boris said and Sean Hendricks, they'll be tough in one of those Ford Mustang Cobra R's that everybody thought would dominate qualifying here, Marty. Absolutely. In fact, uh, what's amazing, take a look. You're all the way down to the ninth position before your average lap comes under 100 miles an hour. And if you base these times on what you would see in the Rolex 24 tomorrow, these cars would be at near the mid-pack of uh, the competition in GTS 3. The cars are still rolling off the pit lane while the cars following the safety car are already up onto NASCAR turns one and two. It's a 3.56 mile combination of the NASCAR tri-oval and the infield that has seen so many great sports car races over the decades. And we expect another one here today. Street stock cars only lightly modified for safety and performance. And the point, Marty, is performance. You are not allowed to take it beyond manufacturer specification. Yeah, and they uh, do a great job in IMSA of tearing the vehicles down for in post-race inspection. They really go over with a fine-tooth comb, and they really try and keep the lid on the expense of these things. But even still, I mean, it costs a, a little bit of money to be competitive at the front of every field. It may be the most democratic and accessible form of high-class racing anywhere in America or the world, for that matter. Down to the showroom, pick out your high-performance car. In a matter of weeks, you can be ready to take to the racetrack. It's going to take a long time to get through all 75 names. I, I hope everybody at home memorized them because we couldn't. <laughs> it's going to be a long afternoon, not only with the number of cars that we have, but the number of drivers. Well over 150 different drivers lined up to race here today. We'll try to stay on top of who is in which car 
I guarantee you with four classes running and as tight as the competition is in the IMSA Endurance Championship, we're going to have a lot to describe. And watch the front row here because Chuck Goldsboro and Rob Walton are starting the cars. Now, they are not the guys who qualified these cars, and no offense to either driver, but they are not as quick as Eric Van Cleef or Don Knowles. So we might see a very quick change at the front. In fact, if you're, you're going to predict anything, take a look at the number five hole because Boris said is going to be starting the number 20 Mustang, and I would expect to see him by the end of lap one pushing for the front. The field divided into four classes, Grand Sports, Sports, Touring, and Compact, not based on engine displacement or horsepower, but what the IMSA officials feel will be a car's relative performance in endurance racing. Now you see the field forming up, the traditional double file side by side. Think you might know any of the names of drivers in this series? How about reigning kart champion Jimmy Vassar, Wayne Taylor, and fellow IMSA champions Irv Hare, Larry Schumacher, Tom Kendall, and Dorsey Schrader, who were 1 2 in the SECA Trans Am Championship last year, David Empringham, who dominated what is now the cool Toyota Atlantic Championship in recent years, IRL co champion Scott Sharp, and Randy Popes, the inaugural champion in the North American Touring Car Series. Pace car should be ducking off the left. They want to hold on here as long as they possibly can as we should get a green flag this time by and somebody's already heading for pit lane. Safety car is off. Our pole sitter brings the field to the line. Green flag not yet displayed and there it is. We are underway with the first race of Speed Weeks 1997 at Daytona International Speedway. The Daytona USA two hour. Hold on for turn one. Oh my, two, three wide. Guys going up the outside in turn one. Look at the size of that field. Rush hour here at Daytona. On to the infield section, to the International Horseshoe. Chuck Goldsboro got a great start. He's pulled out about the two point length lead. Rob Walton is in second place, but here comes Barrasad. He's in the white Mustang to the left of the red car. As the rest of the field streams through that portion, three and four wide. We call it an endurance championship, but we're looking at sprint racing on this first lap. What is absolutely amazing is we have made it this far, and there has been very little trading of paint, usually at first race of the season. And David Sheff is in the pits already. And there's some loose equipment in the car, so they have to tie it down. Looks like he's back on the way. So a bit of a fill-up right here at the start. Tough break for him. Now up onto the banking they go for the first time. That's Boris said on the inside, and he isn't even going to wait for the first lap to end before he's up front. Well, you called it before we came on the air, Marty. Watch Boris said in that Mustang. Now Goldsboro surges back to the front. Look at the horsepower of that twin-turbo Toyota Super. We didn't know exactly what it had because it's the first time in this division, and he has pulled away. Now here comes under braking, and this is where it's going to be interesting. Can Boris close up under him under braking? Keep in mind, these are not racing brakes on these cars. So endurance racing with manufacturer equipment can get interesting. Now Boris, not with he doesn't have the turbo lag and the smaller displacement. He's got that normally aspirated big block. He moves up, and now we have another challenger. Now wait for the Toyota's turbos to spool up, and we'll see Goldsboro come around on the high side. And that's Nick Ham in the uh, 70 car, and Nick, of course, uh, experienced racer both in this series, even the Porsche Super Cup a couple of years ago. And Boris is going to have a tough time on the uh, straightaway sections here. Boris said leads the field through the first lap of the 1997 IMSA Endurance Championship season, and Goldsboro drops to third in the black Toyota. Streaming through seventh and eighth place. Breaking for the horseshoe. The two car was Craig Conway in the Firebird Formula leading that group. He's really experienced in the series. These are the big brand sports cars running near the front. And the four car Rob Walton started on the front row. He has backed up a little bit. The, the CEO of Walmart, the serious racer but uh, not able to hold off the other cars here. And on the outside, that's Bernie Cochran. That's his teammate. <laughs> well, all's fair and love war and racing. Now, because of that mandatory 
driver change, Marty, we expect to see all sorts of strategy played out in terms of which driver starts the car, which man takes over, and when he does it. And Nick Ham has jumped into the lead in front of uh, Boris and pulling away. So again, here we've got another situation where the Mazda RX-7 Turbo can get that turbo spooled up, and he is making tracks. We're going to find out how good Boris's brakes are, I think. The Toyota running in third. Through the infield chicane. Boy, look at the way Nick, uh, Nick came off that corner at the bus stop chicane. He was able to pull away, and he is stretching it right now. No question about it. Nick Ham out front drawing away from Boris Sed and Chuck Goldsboro. They come down to complete another lap. The clock is running as it will through yellow flags or a red flag if we should get one. Grand Sports Division cars dominating the top 10. We'll be back with more live from Daytona. Welcome back live to Daytona International Speedway. Bob Barsha, Marty Reed with you as the Daytona USA two-hour opening round of the IMSA Endurance Championship unfolds. There is Nick Ham with his Mazda Turbo leading Boris said and Chuck Goldsboro, and there's been a tremendous battle for second place, Marty. Yeah, Boris is uh, doing everything he can to hold off Chuck Goldsboro. Goldsboro has the horsepower, but Boris is able to outbreak him. And then I've been watching also as we keep moving through the field here, uh, the, the Dave Shark car with Kelly Collins as his co-driver there in fourth, doing real well. And moving into fifth is Jason Priestley. Jason Priestley sharing with Andy Pilgrim, and if Priestley is able to hold on, as you watch Boris said, going around Nick Ham into the lead, if Priestley can hold on, when Andy Pilgrim gets into that car, they're going to be a force. There's the top five cars right there. Then in sixth is Priestley. What a great battle. Seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth running nose to tail. And that's Bernie Cochran uh, right in front of Stu Hayner. And Hayner uh, is going to try the inside. just ahead of Goldsboro. Well, obviously, there's a trend developing here. Well, why, right through the shot there, you notice the bar set is still holding station in first place. He's been able to hold off Nick Ham, but this is the best battle going right now between these two for third and fourth spot. Car number 53 is in the pits here, John Mikus. Three Mustang has just rolled out, and if we can pan around here, I can show you why. The tire here actually exploded on the car. It lost pressure, and you can see what happens if you have to do a full lap around the Daytona International Speedway with no pressure in the tire. Thankfully, he brought it back, but it was a lengthy pit stop for the 53 Mustang. Looks like some sidewall damage. They might have run up against another car or... Yeah. Sign or no signal it, of any it, debris out there. It is really easy to do. And look at the gap here between Boris Set on the left in first and second place Nick Ham. It's easy to cut a tire here because you're right, all the metal on the sheet body work uh, can really just do a lot of damage very quickly. And here we go. This could get interesting. Heading for the bus stop. 
Battle for third. Collins in the yellow machine. Goldsboro in the black. Matching two turbo Toyotas. Well, they battle among themselves. Here comes Jason Priestley in that white Ford Mustang just behind Goldsboro. Meanwhile, the top two cars of Sed and Ham have drawn away from this battle. If Goldsboro's had a problem, it's been in that bus stop chicane. That's where a lot of people have reeled him in and even uh, gotten close enough to pass him. And he's got his hands full right now with Jason Priestley. He's got to get the turbo spooled up, and I think he's going to be able to hold on to it. Uh-oh, now we're going to get into real interesting things. For the rest of the time, folks, get ready, because there's going to be lap traffic everywhere. Boy, a tip of the helmet to Jason Priestley. He is racing with a lot of aggression and a lot of poise out there as well. He picked up a full second from his time last year since jumping into the car with Andy Pilgrim. Andy, one of the most experienced veterans here, has done a great job of coaching him. Once again, they bunch up on the infield portion of the three-and-a-half-mile Daytona International Speedway Oval and Road Course. We'll be back in a moment. laps into the opening round of the IMSA Endurance Championship for 1997 and Boris said is already lapping cars. I'm impressed again as always Boris getting the most out of his machine and this is the greatest battle we have going up front. That is for third and fourth place. Dave Shark is trying to hold off a hard charge in Chuck Goldsboro. So slower traffic from one of the other classes. Nick Ham just getting around. Now Ham is dropping back. Goldsboro Shark battle with Jason Priestley in close attendance might close up on him shortly. There's a lot of traffic out there, however. And momentum plays a key role with these cars because if you lose it, it takes you so long to regain it. Look at this now, and Jason Priestley, as Goldsboro gets loose in there, that may be a big chance for Priestley to take this spot. Jason Priestley moves up. Keep in mind, I'm sure both drivers would say the stronger member of that team has yet to get in that car. These, these guys were so diligent in their testing. We found out they were testing on New Year's Eve at Willow Springs. Jason and Andy, they've got no life right now. It was cold at Willow Springs on New Year's Eve. Now Priestley is in fourth. Third place just ahead of him. And we'll get to see who comes off this. Ooh, Shark got a little loose there in the back end. Now the Toyota has the horsepower if he can get the... the Turbo spooled up, and here comes Priestley staying on the low side. If he doesn't get it by right about now, you should see that Toyota begin to draw away. There he goes. Yeah, yeah, it does. Every, man, it's impressive. Huh? First time I've seen the car. It really performs. They're going to be selling a few more cars here pretty soon. Everything's cyclical in this series. I remember years ago when the Porsches were just killing the field. Now a Porsche has a hard time just qualifying sometimes near the top ten. And then it was uh, the, the Pontiacs that came along, and then it was the Ford Mustangs. Now it looks like uh, the Mazdas, and, and now it uh, appears that the Toyota Super is going to be the car to beat right now. Well, we always say racing improves street cars. Maybe it's the other way around in this series. The street cars improve the racing. Manufacturers realize there's a lot of hay to be made racing like this, the cars that we all drive on the street. Jason Priestley making a pro-style move down to the inside. Can the Toyota hold him off? I don't uh, think so. Well, I'm wondering if something happened on Shark. Oh, he's got to get out of it. Shark looked like he slowed down momentarily, but he's held on to the position because Priestley had the lap traffic, and that's what you got to do. you got to drive smart here. And here comes Chuck Goldsboro back into the picture. So Chuck's reeled these guys back in thanks to the uh, lap traffic. Oh, we had somebody into the guardrail, and then right here is Jason Priestley coming in. You're going to see the dirt and flying up and just off to their driver's left. We've had one car go into the guardrail there. Remains in the tires. The field navigates the horseshoe. There you see the car at the back of the screen. Car number 62. It's a Honda. Yeah, Kim Lill from Gainesville, Florida is the driver right now. It's one of the Prelude SIs. And uh, they were not running up in front in that division, but, boy, they uh, stuffed it into the tires pretty hard there. He looks to be okay, though. He's talking to IMSA officials and safety corner workers. And looks like, like he's okay. Just got a bit behind on his braking there in the horseshoe. Meanwhile, leader Boris said he's a busy man this weekend at Daytona. He'll be in the field. Tomorrow's running of the Rolex 24 at Daytona. Coming your way on ESPN2 beginning at 12.30 with our On the Grid show. 12.30 Eastern time, of course. 
Now, as he comes into the bus stop chicane here, be careful not to drop any wheels off. IMSA has said that unlike last year, when everybody was kicking up dust and scattering it all over the uh, track, if you consistently put two wheels off and kick dirt up on the track, they're going to black flag you because it, it did create a serious situation for some cars. You get in there, you didn't know there'd be this under much dust, and you'd be spinning right off into the wall. You've driven these cars, Marty. What kind of speed would you reckon they approach that chicane at? You're flat through the throttle all the way down, and, and that's where you've got to find out how good your brakes are and how, how much courage you've got inside because, as you could see, uh, Boris said has plenty of confidence in his driving ability. He was able to outbrake everybody. Are his brakes better than the other cars? Who really knows? I, I've never driven that Toyota Super, but I'll tell you what, I'd like to. There is Nick Ham and his Mazda Turbo holding down second place. Said goes through the picture. Red car is running in another class. There's Ham. Now here's the battle for third. Shard trying to hold off Jason Priestley. Biggest thing is, with this only being a two-hour race, this is not going to be a factor for tires. These guys can go ahead and these Toyos will go the distance as long as you don't do any damage, like flat spot them in a spin or get cut one down like we saw a little bit earlier. So they don't have to worry about that. They shouldn't have to worry about brakes either. Jason Priestley is far from the first driver with, shall we say, a, an interesting sort of day job, the first celebrity to come to this series. Years ago at my home track, Road Atlanta, I recall watching NASCAR car owner par excellence Rick Hendricks sharing a machine with actor Tom Cruise. Well, I'll tell you what, if uh, Jason keeps this kind of performance up, uh, nobody will be uh, coming to interview him about uh, being an actor. Toyota getting sideways, back in wanting to come around. I think maybe he wanted to get that turbo spooled up as soon as possible. With Priestley right there now, the Mustang is underneath, and this is where he can get him. More traffic ahead. And there is uh, his co-driver, Andy Pilgrim, who is uh, very anxious, I can tell, but he's got to be very happy. Under braking for the chicane. The Mustang looks like it's got better brakes than the Toyota right now because if you notice there, the Toyota sort of fell back a little bit. So that may be the one advantage that they've got, and they can use that, especially when it comes to traffic. Speaking of brakes, we've got one coming up. We'll be back for more live coverage of the IMSA Endurance Championship from Daytona. Everybody having a great time at the World Center of Racing. Welcome back live to Daytona International Speedway. The Ford Mustang Cobra of Boris Said leads the way in the IMSA Endurance Championship. Coming up tonight on ESPN in prime time, day two of the Winter X Games from Big Bear Mountain, California. The difficulty finals for men and women in ice climbing, practice and preliminary for the women in snow biking, and the half pipe on snowboards, the prelims for men and women, and the finals as well. Starting at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN, catch the Winter X. Watching Boris said, you know, we talked about all his experience in uh, road racing. One of the interesting things, if you were with us a couple weeks ago on our NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series uh, debut, he was in the Urban SEMO uh, vehicle and needed a provisional to get in and was the first to admit, he said, man, I have a ton to learn about race nobles with these guys. Not the first guy to say that. <laughs> Those ovals aren't as easy as they look. It'll be interesting to see when we go to Watkins Glen, though, and uh, those kinds of tracks, Topeka, when uh, he'll get to show his talent. Jason Priestley now putting the moves on Nick Ham for second place in this race. Now, that was the team car. I think that's uh, Tremblay, uh, the 71 car, not the 70 nope, car. Did I get carried away? Yeah, it was. Yeah. It's 71 instead of 70. It's easy enough to do. There's only 75 here. This is when we wish we were doing basketball with 10 guys to worry about, right? I am willing Jason Priestley on until he can hand it over to Andy Pilgrim. Andy's going to be real happy if uh, Jason keeps this up running. Eight for Morissette, up to almost six seconds. Well, there's Stu Hayner, and he's got a good battle going on with the number 90 machine. And that's got uh, Scooter Gable in uh, the cockpit of the Mustang Cobra. So we got a little Ford competition going on with the Pontiac. That's what's good about this series, too. Spectators can identify with the cars. And uh, it's amazing uh, as the spectators get down and start looking at the machines, they start thinking about, I wonder if I could do that with mine at home. I'm surprised how easy it is. This is for seventh place. 
Stu Hainer, another one of the guys that's also going to be driving in the uh, uh, Rolex 24. He's in the number 91 GTS 1 car. And uh, yesterday I saw him put it off the course for the first time. And it, whoa, look out. Getting loose there, coming around the corner. That will open the door for Stu Hainer to get on the throttle. He, and, and even he said he's it's the first time I can remember having four wheels off. Long, long time, and what it was, they changed all the gearing in the car, and it changed all the shift points, and he missed the gear. Let's talk about strategy a little bit now. Here's Jan Bikas. Well, we always talk about pit windows. What is a pit window for this particular series? Well, in order to score points, you have to drive 25% of the distance. Well, because of the unique nature of this race being an hour and 50 minutes long, that number equates to 27 and a half minutes. So it's been quiet down here on pit road for about 25 minutes into the race. So if you have a problem with your car, or if you have the slowest driver in the car, you might see somebody on pit road in a couple of minutes, guys. This is the time that everybody's starting to wonder, will that first full force yellow come out? <laughs> Keep in mind, the cars are heavy with fuel, and the race begins as well, so you have to balance your driver's strength when you decide your strategy for the race. Right now, Boris said having it all his own way, so he expands his lead over Nick Hamm in a Mazda and Jason Priestley. Mustang. We'll take a timeout. Back with more. Preparations for pit stops coming up. Back live at Daytona International Speedway. The opening round of the IMSA Endurance Championship continues. Bob Barsha, Marty Reed along with you. We've had action in the pit lane, and this is dramatic. Our fourth placed car, Kelly Collins. He was black flagged by IMSA officials, we're being told, and I don't know what the penalty was for, but we're going to find out. There is Collins. Bringing it around to the pit exit. Now let's learn more with Jan Bikas. Well, the reason that number 92 machine was brought on pit road for a stop and go is he dropped the wheel off in the bus stop chicane. They consider that shortcutting the chicane. We've got about four cars down here with that penalty, but that's definitely the highest running car we've seen so far, guys. Bill? And... And Jan, down here, this is Jason Priestley's pit. The IMSA official just came down and said the stop-and-go penalties you're seeing are for dropping tires off the racing surface. This is the second time they've warned these guys about doing this. They want to keep them on the track. Now, Andy Pilgrim is the veteran driver, co-teamed with Jason Priestley. He's doing a fine job. Excellent teaching. Well, I don't know about excellent teaching. I think he's a, he's a natural. He, he's doing real well. He listens real well, which makes sense if you think about what he does for a living outside here. Um, he's doing really well on his own right. Obviously, you're a champion in this series. He's a young up-and-coming driver, takes it very seriously. That's an interesting combination. You started him first, and what was your thinking behind that, Andy? Basically, we just get an idea when the car's nice and new at the beginning of the race, it gives him an ability to go a little harder than he might be able to at the end. Good luck. Thank you. All right, wow. Bill Weber was talking with Andy Pilgrim. Boris said in the number 20 car to the right side of your screen, found himself an adventure coming off the chicane and up onto the banking. Yeah, Hugh Johnson pulls down the inside. He literally had to go on the apron, and that is not very good because there's a lot of marbles and stuff down there. And look how far he drifts back up. I'm, I'm sure that Boris is glad he made it through that one. He said using all the track and then some in the international horseshoe. And if he'd have been in his super truck or a Winston Cup car, I think he would have been sliding to the wall there. Let me correct something I said. It was Kelly Collins bringing the number 92 car in for that stop and go. I believe Dave Sharp's still behind the wheel of that car. Yeah, and I'm surprised that since they had the penalty and they were in that position, and Collins is the quicker driver of the two, why not go ahead and make the driver change? They're past the limit, and because they've already lost that track position, you might as well have gotten your fast guy in, but uh, that's why we race. Morris said up front, second generation racer. Second is Nick Hamm, third Jason Priestley. The sun begins to get low here at Daytona International Speedway. And the only spot where the sun really comes into play is coming up onto the banking into to NASCAR 1, and it's just a, a brief little flash. Right there, you're in the shadow, and, and by then, as you can see, it's on the back deck, so it's really not a factor here. Up to top speed on the back straightaway. Here's our class leader in the sports class, a BMW. Mark Lawrence behind the wheel of the 328 IS and uh, doing very well so far. Remember, four different classes of racing, and he is 27 overall. Tells you something about 
the number of grand sports cars we've got out here who are very, very competitive. Hey, the one thing you don't want to do in those BMWs or the Porsches is bend up the fenders. It's a lot more expensive to fix those than it is a Pontiac. I'll bet. Mark Lawrence sharing with Jeff McMillan on the weekend. Leader Boris Set completes another lap. He's now 13 laps into this race, but it is a timed race, one hour and 50 minutes. Now let's take a look at the interval from our leader, back to the second place car of Nick Ham. And I think that's Nick coming into view. Is that Nick right there? Second place, uh, yep, I think that is right there. Oh, it's tough with all the traffic there. Yeah, that was Nick in that 33 car. That's the problem with all those uh, Joe Aquilani cars. They're all painted the same paint scheme, that black and gold, but that's the 33, not the 32. We well, notice how dirty it was getting down there in the International Horseshoe. That's another reason they want guys to keep cars on the racetrack, is to keep that dirt off. Keep yeah. the racing line clean. There's Nick Ham, and he is trying to work on it. Billy, you got something else on the 70 car? Well, just that this was going to be a two-hour race, and obviously so we could show everybody the finish and get a word with the winner, it was shortened to an hour and 50 minutes. Now, normally that's not a big deal, but it is for the 70 car and the 71 because they could probably only go 58 minutes on a full load of fuel. If this had been a full two-hour race, they might have had to make a second stop. But since it was shortened by 10 minutes, they'll only have to make one stop. They're a fast car. Nick Hamm told me they have a good shot at winning here because it's, light on, it's a light car, easy on the brakes. But because of the fuel mileage factor in a two-hour race, they might have had to make two stops, hour and 50 minutes, just one. So there were some smiles in the driver's meeting when that bulletin was announced. Rolling through the infield chicane. Nick Ham runs in second place. One relaxing in the pit lane. There are driver changes to come. Out of the shadows of NASCAR turns one and two on the Oval at Daytona International Speedway into the bright sunlight. IMSA Endurance Championship race leader Boris Said has now extended his lead over the second place car of Nick Ham to approximately 11 seconds. That was at the start finish line of the previous lap. And with all the traffic of this 75 car field out there, that lead was expanding and contracting constantly. Our crack stats man, Dave Arnold, has passed on something that even I didn't know about Morris. He's second generation. His father drove in the first U.S. Grand Prix at Sebring, Sebring and the first Daytona 500 back in 1959. Did I say earlier he was a second generation driver? Yeah, but I didn't know the events that he was in. I mean, that, that's amazing. Battle for sixth. I think it's seventh, but uh, yeah, it is seventh. It's okay. And that is uh, uh, John Kohler in front of Stu Hayner right there. Oh, he's got lap traffic in front. Watch Hayner now. Hayner's going to take advantage. Oh, oh, I think there might have been a bit of a touch there. I don't think he knew which way John was going to go. I don't think John knew which way he was going to go. Well, they both survived. It doesn't look the worst for where he, if he's got a little nose damage, it's, it's not enough to get back into the radiator portion of the car. Down in the pits. Here's Jan Bikas. One of the grand sports cars is into the pits. That's the 08 machine, the Pontiac Firebird. And they're having some problems at the moment. There's going to be a driver change, but I think it's only to try and find the problems on this car. The hood came up immediately. Now the engine has been shut down and they are going for the oil. They're going for the dipstick. So it looks as though they have an internal engine problem and getting into the car at the moment is one of the more experienced drivers who's going to go out there and try and find what this problem might be. Frank Del Vecchio started that car. They started 16th. Obviously their chances of a successful finish in this opening round of the 10 race IMSA Endurance Championship in 1997. His hopes are evaporating quickly. You, know, you can make the driver change. If you don't have too much of a problem, like that stop and go penalty that we saw earlier, you can make the driver change before going the lap down if you're close enough to that front pack. It takes about two minutes, six, two minutes, seven seconds to get around. Now, here are the class leaders. Barset still up front. Barset in the sports class. Lawrence, whom we saw earlier. And then in touring and compact. The smaller cars, just a bit less powerful. 
They're having a race each in their own class. Yeah, Joe Nonamaker and uh, John Phillips in those uh, two other divisions. And boy, once you get swept up in this, you literally, when you come to one of these events, you, you look at any corner and you're going to find somebody passing somebody someplace. Morris said, flashes to the start finish line. To complete another lap as the sun continues to sink low here in North Florida. He looked a little twitchy there for a second. Well, he's been twitchy all the way around. Boris is not taking it easy here. <laughs> Sean Hendricks may be looking at this and saying, hey, come on, give me something to work with. Now there's Dave Shard of the number 92 car. It was black flagged earlier. They chose not to make the driver change then. But with that Toyota Super Turbo, he's trying to work his way back through the field. He's on the infield chicane. Headed for turns three and four. He runs in 13th position right now, so he is improving steadily. This would be a nice little comeback for this team. But remember, they still have to make their pit stop. The race has been surprisingly free of incident or attrition to this point. Only one major crash we've seen. A spin on the horseshoe. We've got cars everywhere on the infield. Looks like everybody's going to survive it, but it was close. Interesting routes. I don't know which car started it. Somebody spun on the racing line. People took evasive action. Now up to 12th place is Dave Sharp. Yeah, he just got around Matt Turner in the 17. That's another Mustang Cobra R. Nice paint job on that car, too. There are some beautifully turned out cars in this series, we should add. All that dirt on the horseshoe. Yeah, and here's the reason why. I mean, you're going you're gonna to see rush hour traffic, uh, and it's going to be a log jam. That is the 81 that's going to start things off there on the inside. Mike Fitzgerald. Oh, and just tagged from behind by the 07. Not exactly a spin. That was a, uh, excuse me, the 07 Oldsmobile Achieva shared by Tim Falanga and Chad Zanheiser. That hurt. Ouch. He's picking his way here in the 92 Shard. He's doing a good job. Now, that, that 97 car is not in his class. Uh, he's much faster than that Mazda. And uh, on up onto the banking now, and he's trying to catch the three car, which is driven right now by Bertie Cochran. In fact, there is his target. That's Bernie in the number three Pontiac Firebird formula. The Shard is not that far behind. As Cochran breaks for the chicane. Bernie Cochran out of Euphrata, Pennsylvania. Shart's now shown in 11th position. And Cochran is, uh, he's going to be a victim here pretty soon. He too has a strong driving partner. David Murray will get into Cochran's car when the driver change is made. Right now, the man on the move is right there in the middle of your picture. We'll be back with more from Daytona in a moment. Welcome back to Daytona International Speedway. One slightly second-hand Honda is now in the pits. That's the machine of Kim Leal and Bob Beattie. Earlier, we saw them in the tire wall on the International Horseshoe. Yeah, this is the downside of uh, street stock racing. That's what your car would look like if you do this at home. Just call out, call out your body, man. Down to Bill Weber. And obviously, a lot of damage on this car. And Kim is here. Tough way to get on TV, but what happened out there? I was just on a tough battle with about three or four cars. Just going into the International Horseshoe, one of the cars in front of me was kind of breaking a little bit early and just uh, just lost it into the tire wall. A lot of traffic. Uh, there was a lot of traffic, yeah. There were about four of us that were very close to the same pace. And uh, you're okay. What can I say? I'm all right. Car's not good. There is your leader, Boris said, of the white number 20 Ford Mustang, dealing with some of the traffic you just heard Kim Lil talk about. And that's one of the Porsches you were discussing earlier, Marty, that yeah. once ruled this series. Yeah, yeah, they did. Dave Sheps is behind the wheel in that one. Uh, and I'm, I'm, oh, oh it, it's, it's a, it, that brings pains to my chest, <laughs> watching that car get blown away like that. 
I didn't know you were such a Porsche fanatic, Marty. Well, that's what I drove back when we were racing this. Look at look at Boris all over the track, down on the apron again. He is not going to give up the pace. He wants to get a nice lead because just in case we don't get a full course yellow, he wants as much time as he can. We saw the brake lights flashing as he as he breathed those brakes through the corner. Forcing a spin there. Boris working the brakes. I don't know if he's having to pump the pedal up or if he's just trying to conserve his brakes. Usually that's a sign that you're having a bit of fade. Now he could be cramped. Whoa, there's a car that got loose also. That looks like one of the BMWs. He threw there a little bit sideways. In fact, that is our class leader in uh, sports division. So uh, he's pushing it kind of hard at this point. I think some of these, you know, I think everybody thought there would be an early full course yellow, and these guys are doing a great job here, first race out of the season. Second in Grand Sports and in the overall standings, Nick Ham with his Mazda Turbo. But he is losing ground to the race leader, Boris said. One of the questions I'd like to see now is, is Jason Priestley reeling in second place? Because, oh, that was close also. You can see the cars lurch like that. Granted, there's a lot of body roll in a car that's basically built for street use. Now in its element on a racetrack. But boy, sometimes it looks like there's contact. There's Jason Priestley. Looks like he's pretty much holding station. Hey, if he brings this car to Andy Pilgrim in third place with plenty of brakes left, this car is going to be in contention for the win. That'll do a lot for Jason Priestley's reputation. Well, we have Craig T. Nelson, a fellow TV actor, racing in the Rolex 24 here in Daytona on ESPN2. Then we can have an all-television car somewhere in this race. They put a couple of TV announcers in. A lot of lap traffic there in front of the 92 car as a... Dave Shard, and there is the three car. Now, Shard, remember, he is now in 11th. Bernie Cochran is his next target in uh, the number three car, and right in front of him, that 57 car, that's a real interesting story. Shane Lewis and Ed Zabinski, right there you saw it go through your, your, your screen there. That car ran up the mountain of Pikes Peak a couple of years ago when the uh, Bridgestone Supercar Series was competing out there. Right, in fact, switching over to a car more suited for running up the mountain. What brought Shen, Sean Hendricks to the title that year. Yeah, he ran into a four-wheel drive Mitsubishi, the only four-wheel drive, and it paid off for him. Cochran there. Now, that's where I'd expect Shark to really close up on him, but he didn't that time. Well, we'll find out, especially under braking, because it, it still looks like the best braking cars are the uh, Mustangs, and then it, it might be a toss-up between the uh, Pontiacs and the Toyotas. chicane and up onto the banking of NASCAR turns three and four. There is Boris said. Now he is on the infield well ahead of the battle you just saw. And Boris said continues to draw away. Remember we still have driver changes. This race could take on a whole new complexion very shortly. Stay with us. Welcome back to Daytona, and there's just about to be action in the pits. Eric Van Cleef, the driver of the number 88 machine, you're just about to get in. Why pit now? Um, the fuel light just came on, and we, we're not sure how far the car will go after the fuel light comes on, so we're going to go ahead and pit now. We're in, we're in our window. Okay, here it is. Let's watch it. This is the top runner we've seen so far coming in to make this pit stop. It's the 88 Twin Turbo Supra. Eric Van Cleef, who won the championship in a normally aspirated go, Toyota go, go, go. Supra, is going to be getting into the car. And this comes just before the one-hour mark. So if this is to be the one and only stop for this team, it could be close. Hey, Jan, give Chuck Goldsboro a pat on the back, telling him uh, that was a great run. He has put his team in a position to win this race, and that's what your first driver needs to do. Yes, he's done a great job. As soon as they get this driver change done, maybe we'll try and get a word with him. They are checking this car pretty carefully for tire wear. Of course, the reason this stop is so much slower than what we're used to is the amount of fuel that has to go into the car. So that's why it appears as though the crew at the moment is somewhat relaxed. They're just waiting for that last bit of fuel. Well, the one thing we have learned on those Toyotas is they gobble up the fuel. They're the first ones in, the 92 cars in. Now, there you see on the right the number 92 car, Dave Shard. He was chasing the number three car over there on the left of Bernie Cochran. Both cars making a mandatory stop now. 
he could pick up a position. Could Shart or he'll hand off to Kelly Collins. They could pick up a spot in the pits if they can work quickly enough. And David Murray will take over in the three car. So this could get very, very interesting. And our leader has just come by the start finish line. So both these vehicles now are a lap down. The 88, the 92, and the three car. But remember, the 20 car has got to go for its pit stop yet. 71 having to be pushed back into its spot. Now one hour officially remaining in the race. The 88 car is in the pits. Jan, you uh, caught up with Chuck Goldsboro? Yes, that's right. The 88 car is still on pit road. Now it comes off the jack, and it's out of here. Boy, that fuel took a very, very long time. Let's turn and talk to the driver who was in that car, Chuck Goldsboro. Tell me, was that longer than you expected? Why did the fuel take so long? Um, I don't know. This is the first race we've had to do this car, and so we don't know the length of the pit stops, uh, how long we can run it out. Uh, we got to learn this car. It's the first time for the season, so we've got a lot of learning to do. Now tell me, it's also the first time for you to ever start on pole position in any race. What was it like? You did a good job. Um, it was tough. Eric told me not to hold the pole. He goes, there are going to be some guys, like Boris said, that want to push on through. Let them. He said, keep it in the top five. So I tried to keep it in, I, I forget, either third, fourth, or fifth. And uh, we held it there. I did just what uh, Eric asked me to do. So can Eric go to the front? Oh, yeah. The, it, the track is real slick, and nobody has an advantage in the bus stop chicane because of all the dirt and crap on the track. So Eric will pull it back. Thanks, and good job. Thanks. It was a good job. Uh, Chuck can be very proud. Look at the 79. Now, this is a Mazda RX-7 turbo. You want to know what happens when your turbo's going bad? Well, you can kill an awful lot of mosquitoes. David Shep from Ontario, Canada. Obviously, he is losing power in that car, but he has been laying down a spectacular smoke screen on the infield section, that kind of thing. It's, it's just got indigestion. See, it's, it just burps every now and then. That's what it's doing. Been there, done that. However, there's your leader. To the line comes Boris Seth, who still has a driver change to make. He remains in control, and we'll be back for more of the opening round of the Insane Endurance Championship.